so we've talked um, about I think all of the material in chapter one and now we're going to do a little bit of a start into chapter two which is about inference for regression so I think you've seen my picture before where we have the population and the sample and we're doing draws like that and um, we've talked about some terms like parameters and statistics for things like mean. Our parameter would be mu and our statistic would be x bar. And proportion. Parameter would be p and our statistic would be p hat. And now we're starting to think about uh, parameters like beta 0 and beta 1 and our statistics beta 0 hat and beta 1 uh, so these are regression coefficients. In a stat course, an intro stat course, you might have called um, these uh, B, B0 and B1, um, but I use the betas with the hats. Uh, so that's just our notation. So inference is the process of trying to draw conclusions about the population based only on information about the sample. So there's kind of two main inferential tasks that we do. There's hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Uh, I usually say that the question that we're asking with hypothesis testing is, is this number different than zero? And with confidence intervals, we're asking, what are some other reasonable values we could have observed? So for hypothesis testing, um, you might remember that what we do is we find a test statistic which is our observed value minus ex our expected value over a standard error. So for example, if we were doing inference for a proportion, we would have our observed p hat. Maybe we want to know if that proportion is different than 0.5, and we would divide by the standard error. Or maybe we have a mean, an x bar. We want to know if people's average temperature is different than 98.5, and we would divide by the standard error. So we're going to start doing um, sim similar things like that, uh, particularly for the slope coefficient, the beta 1. We don't usually do inference about beta 0 because it's not that interesting. Is the intercept different than 0? Eh, I don't know if we really care about that because, you know, maybe it makes sense for it to be 0. If the value of the explanatory variable is 0, maybe it makes sense for the value of the response to be 0. But we like to do inference on beta 1 because if the slope is 0, then uh, it's just flat. So we want to know, OK, we've observed this you know, slight, slightly positive slope. Is that significantly different than 0? Or is it just kind of the result of random chance? And so our test statistic for regression is a t value. And the way that we do it is uh, beta 1 hat um, and secretly we're doing like minus 0 here because we're always comparing to see if it is 0 so we don't have to subtract off that expected value anything minus 0 is itself so beta 1 hat over the standard error of beta 1 and I'm not going to ask you to compute the standard error on your own I might ask you to read it out of a regression summary um, but I don't need you to figure it out and just a couple ideas about um, you know where the standard error comes from one way you could do it is by simulation so randomization or the bootstrap and the other thing we could do is the theoretical distribution like the students t distribution i'm not going to get into that right now but just remember that there's different ways to come up with a standard and the degrees of freedom for regression are n minus 2. And basically, this is because if I had a set of data like that, um, and you were kind of imagining in your head, oh, I can imagine the nice straight regression line that would be fit through that data set. Um, but you let me pick two points. I could make the regression line be anything that I want by using um, leverage and influence. So if you said, oh, I have this nice data set and it's got this nice positive regression line, I could say, well, then I pick my two dots to be here and here. And now your regression line is going to have to do something like that. 
So the degrees of freedom are how many points um, it would take for me to make the particular regression line. And for re uh, regression, it's n minus 2. So again, just a little bit of a reminder, um, if we're thinking about a theoretical distribution and we have a t value um, and we want to find a p value, what we would do is we would compare it to a t distribution, um, something like this. Uh, and we're going to say, let's look at where our t distribution is in the context of the uh, distribution. And then we're going to sh say the p value is the proportion of the distribution that is as extreme or more extreme than that t value. So this would be my t value. And then my p value is the proportion of the distribution that is as extreme or more extreme than the test statistic. That's my p-value. So if I had a, an extreme t-value, then I'd get a small p-value. If I had a not very extreme t-value, then I'd get a big p-value. Um, small p-value, we reject the null and not small, we fail to reject. What's small? We often set our alpha level at 0.05. R is actually going to give us stars to show how significant something is. Is it significant at the 0.05 level, the 0.01 level, the 0.001 level, etc. This is a data set that I was using in the lecture code earlier. Um, I went back to the version without transformations just so it was like a little bit easier to think about the coefficients. Um, and then I could look at uh, my estimate, like my, my slope coefficient. That's my beta 1 hat is negative 3.5. And then it also tells me the standard error. That's what this column is. So the SE of beta 1 hat is 0 0.1945. And then if I was going to find the T value, I'd do beta 1 hat over the standard error of beta 1 hat, which is negative 3.5 over 0 0.1945, which is negative 18.15. That's actually also in the table here. And then we would have to go look at a t distribution. Um, so this would be a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. And in this case, it's actually going to tell us our degrees of freedom. So n minus 2 is equal to 232. That's a pretty big n. So the t distribution is basically going to look like the normal distribution. Um, and we know from the normal distribution, anything bigger than like Two standard deviations, that's pretty significant. Three standard deviations, that's really significant. This is 18 standard deviations, basically. Woo it's super, super significant. And so that's what R is telling you here with this information, with the three stars. Three stars means really, really significant. And less than 2e minus 16 means less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16th. So it's a smaller p-value than 0. 0.000000, lots and lots of zeros. It's very significant. So we would reject the null. There is evidence that the slope is not 0. So that's an indication that using the regression model with the slope is better than just using the flat mean. And let's also talk about a confidence interval. The way that confidence intervals work, the sort of generic uh, way, is a statistic, plus or minus something that depends on the alpha level and the distribution times the standard error. And so that might, the something that depends on the alpha level and the distribution, that might be a Z star value or a T star value. In the case of regression, it's a T star value. And so what we would do is beta 1 hat plus or minus t star times the standard error, and we need to use that n minus 2. Um, and then again, as n approaches infinity, the t distribution approaches the z distribution, we could just use 1.96 as our rule of thumb for a 95% interval. So let's do it with the cars data. So my uh, slope was negative 3.5, negative 3.5 
plus or minus, and I'm going to use 1.96 just to be easy, uh, times the standard error, which was 0 0.1945. So that's negative 3.5 plus or minus 0 0.38, negative uh, 3.5 minus 0.38 should be minus 3.88, and negative 3.5 plus 3.38 is negative 3.12. So we could plug this into our generic sentence and sort of mix it up with the 95% confidence interval sentence. So I'm going to say we are 95% confident that for a one liter increase in a displacement, the highway mileage will increase, oh, will decrease, because it's negative, decrease between 3.9, let's round, and 3.1 miles per gallon. So we know that it's going to go down between 3 and 4 miles per gallon for an, a liter increase in the displacement. So that's how we would interpret our confidence interval.